Please just tell me the time and temperature to cook it at. Can't you just give me the time per pound? These are questions I get all the time and the answer is I can't or I would be setting you up for failure and this is why. Welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. I know you want specific guidelines. I know you want in recipes for it to say exactly the time and the temperature so that you can cook your food perfectly without any guesswork. But guess what? That's not real life. That's not how it works. So I thought I would do a video cooking a delicious pork loin and show you how to think things through when you're following a recipe as a guideline because there are so many variables in cooking. All right, so first off, these are two pork loins, okay? They are about the same weight. This one is a touch heavier, but not by much. This is two and a half pounds. This is two and three quarters pounds. But look at the difference in the shape right now this one's frozen so it will flatten a little bit as it falls but definitely will not become like this one okay it is much flatter it is a little bit longer so we have different shapes now the way food cooks is from heat transfer from the outside to the inside and we always monitor an internal temperature of the meat right at the very center because that's the last thing to come up to the correct temperature because it goes from hot to cold so the very center of our meat is always going to be colder than the outside of our meat okay unless it's just out of the fridge which is another variable we're going to get into so what happens with the shape of a roast is that this one is going to take longer to cook than this one because the dead center is further away from the outside. It's shorter and it's taller. So even if they're identical weights, this one would still take longer to cook than this one. So if I gave you pressure cook five minutes per pound for pork loin, which is a good, a good estimate, okay? That's a good rough starting point and I was using a pork roast that looked like this, and you were using a pork roast that looked like that, you might say, Louise, I undercooked dinner because you followed my recipe. That is why recipe creators write recipes with ranges and guidelines for checking the internal temperature. Even in baking, which you know people think is totally like chemistry, it's not all chemistry, it's a little art to it too. But you follow the recipe, but your oven might be calibrated a little bit differently. So we give ranges because we want you to be successful. We want you to have a good outcome. And having a good outcome depends on you mostly paying attention to the food as it cooks and using the guidelines that we set so that you cook it perfectly each and every time. Now, let me get into cooking this so you can see it, how to do a beautiful pork loin that is two and a half pounds and about three and a half to four inches high, okay? Now, I picked a pork loin because number one, I'm gonna use pressure cook and people are really shy about pressure cooking pork because they always overcook it, right? Well, again, that is about timing and managing your time and your temperature. So I'm gonna show you how to think that through and how to do that. Now, if your pork loin looks like mine and it's about two and a half pounds, you can certainly follow these instructions exactly. If it looks more like this or is a little bit bigger, then you're gonna increase your pressure cook time, but just by a tad, okay? It is always better to undercook than overcook because you can always finish cooking something. You cannot uncook it. Once it is dry and, and overcooked, it is going to be dry and overcooked. The best you can do is kind of salvage it by putting it into a sauce or something. But we don't wanna to have to do that. I wanna slice this and I wanna be able to slice this pork thin or thick and have it super tender. And guess what, pressure cook does a great job. Now you see we have this fat cap on the top. I'm also going to air fry that, okay? So I have two cooking methods to get the best result from this pork loin that I want, okay? This, if you wanted it shredded, you would do something different. But for me, I want it sliceable and I want this fat rendered. So number one, I'm not gonna cut the fat cap off. 
Number two, I'm gonna pressure cook and then air crisp. So I have to think about my pressure cooking times. How high do I want that temperature to get with pressure cook and where do I set the times? Now, if you look on the internet for recipes, you could find timing anywhere from, you know, 10 minutes of pressure cook to probably two hours of pressure cook for a pork loin, okay? Maybe two hours is a bit much, but you know, depending on the size. And, and you might not know what to do. Well, always under, estimate. That is one thing. So if you see recipes that range, let's narrow that range down a little bit. They range between 30 minutes of pressure cook time and one hour of pressure cook time. And they kind of are all over the place there. Honestly, I would start with 25 minutes of pressure cook time. That's what I would do. If I was cooking something for the first time and I wasn't really sure uh, about the recipe creator or who they, you know, how they wanted their meat cooked. Okay. So let's get this rubbed up because we want it to be delicious. So we want to put a rub on it. I'm using a basic rub of thyme, cinnamon, salt, pepper, uh, onion powder and garlic powder. That's it. That's in there. And really super easy, but you can use anything you like. Like if you wanted to serve this up like with some barbecue sauce or something, uh, like for sliced pork with barbecue sauce, you absolutely could put a barbecue rub on there. You could just leave it alone with salt and pepper. You could put anything on this uh, pork that you like, okay? So it's not a recipe for the rub or anything, but if you want to get it, this rub will be on my website where I have the uh, Ninja Foodie Pork Loin recipe, which is going to be associated with this video. But instead of just showing you how to cook a pork loin in the Ninja Foodie, I thought I would do a little more education on cooking in general so that you could... Use your recipes correctly, follow, follow them as guidelines, but also make informed decisions. Okay, there we go. That looks great. Let me wash my hands, clean up here a little bit, and then we will get under pressure. Putting one cup of water, and I'm just using water because I'm going to keep the pork loin above the liquid for this recipe. Uh, and we don't need to really uh, flavor it. It doesn't have to be chicken stock or anything like that, but you could if you wanted to. It's not going to add any benefits, though, to the pork loin. So I would just stick with plain old water. Or if you wanted apple juice, you could put in there. If you wanted to make a gravy, now that's different. Okay, so if you wanted to do your pork loin and make a gravy, then absolutely I would use some sort of a stock, whether it be chicken or beef or, or apple juice or whatever, you know, because you would want some kind of a base flavoring. All right, now let's talk about Timing and temperature. This is a two-step process on pressure cooking and air crisping. And I know that I'm gonna need probably a good 15 minutes of air crisping to be able to really render that fat and get it nice and crispy. How do I know that? From experience, okay? So a lot of this does come from just doing it and maybe not getting it right and then doing it again and getting it perfect and remembering the steps along the way. So I've done a lot of cooking in my life, so I've had a lot of fails and a lot of successes. So about 15, maybe even 20 minutes for the fat cap to really render and become nice and crispy. And that is going to continue to cook the pork. Now, the serving temperature of the pork for me that I want is 145 degrees. Not 150, not 155, and certainly not 160. I want it at 145. That is medium. It is it is done. It is not really pink anymore. Um, and it's really, really tender then. That is the optimal temperature for cooking pork. Now, I know a lot of people are going to argue with me or at least have other thoughts on that. Hey, that's perfectly fine. You can cook your pork to 160. You're just going to increase your pressure cook time a little bit, okay? Or increase your air crisp time. We can always manage things if we know how to start it off right. So if I want to serve this at 145, I have to take into account that it is going to raise in temperature when it rests, right? And when it's done resting, I want it to hit that 145. Remember the bigger round roast? That would raise up about 15 degrees in a 10 minute rest time, okay, because of the shape of it. So when you have things that are flatter, like steaks and things like that, they always say five to 10 degrees of carryover heat. That's right. But when you have a larger type of roast, it's more. It's at 15 to 20 degrees, okay, for something that, that is that uh, round. This one's a little flatter, 
but I would still at least say it's going to increase 10 to 15 degrees. So I want to pull it out about between 130 and 135. No hotter than 135 if I want it to be perfect for serving at 145. These are in Fahrenheit, by the way. So I want to just cook this until it's about 100 to 110 degrees internally in the pressure cooker portion of it because I want to have enough room to air crisp to render the fat so that we get the crispy uh, top and we have that tender, juicy, perfectly cooked pork loin. Okay, so how do we do that? We really go down on our timing, okay? So I'm gonna pressure cook for 15 minutes with a 10 minute natural release. That's not long at all, my friends, okay? Not at all. All right, so let's get this in. It's on the rack. You could put it in the basket if you wanted to. That would be perfectly fine. We're gonna lower the lid. Make sure your valve is to the sealed position. We're gonna take the slider all the way over on this model. Other models will have different ways that you put on the pressure lid, so just secure it. Make sure the valve is sealed. That's super important. We're gonna go on high pressure and we're gonna go for 15 minutes. And it's gonna take about eight to 10 minutes for the water to heat up to produce the steam to put the pot under pressure. That's also cook time, okay? And hit start. Now, remember, when we're done, I'm aiming for an internal temperature of about 100 to 110. If I go hotter than that, I just decrease my air crisping time, okay? So nothing ruined here. This is pretty much foolproof because I'm not gonna overcook my pork in 15 minutes. I know that from experience. I will be able to control how much longer it cooks with air crisp so I can cook it perfectly to the internal temperature that I want for serving, which is 145. So at about seven and a half minutes, the beep uh, signal went off and then of course it says I can open the lid. But if that happens to you and a recipe says for to wait a 10 minute natural release, not just a full natural release, but a 10 minute natural release, leave it in the pot for the full 10 minutes, okay? Um, that's kind of important because it's still cooking in there and we want to make sure that we get it up to at least that 100 degrees, right? This is where a little bit of crossing your fingers and you hope you calculated it right. But if we didn't, we fix it at the next step, which is the air crisping. All right, the moment of truth. All right, so I am reading about 101 degrees, so that is pretty good. Now, of course, if I go down a little bit further, I'll get higher readings because I'm getting down to the bottom. And remember, the heat transfers from hot to cold. So the very center is always gonna be your coldest. That's where you measure the temperature in order for the meat to be cooked exactly the way you want. And also for food safety reasons, we need that very center temperature to reach 145 before we serve it, okay? So now we can air crisp. I don't worry about the liquid or anything in there. It's not gonna make a big difference. We're gonna have that direct fan, that direct heat going right down on that fat cap. I wanna do this as fast as possible. So I'm gonna go on the highest setting. So I'm gonna use 400 degrees of air crisp. You could also use broil, or it's known as grill on the European models. And that's a little bit hotter of a temperature. It reaches about 450. Either would work here. So it, there is no right or wrong. I'm just gonna stick with the air crisp. So we need to cancel the old program out. And when the slider's over here to the right, it defaults to air fry. Now, I really don't know exactly how long it's gonna take. At about 110, I'm hoping we have a good 15 minutes to reach that 135 where I'm gonna pull it and let it sit and rest and come up to the 145. I'm hoping we have a good 15 minutes for that fat cap. But I'm gonna leave 20 on the clock and hit start, and now we just let it do its thing. Now, if your temperature was much hotter than that, because maybe your roast was smaller, and you were temping after pressure cooking and it was up in the 120s, no worries either. You could do a couple things. You can go on a lower temperature for a longer period of time, or you could stick to the high temperature for a shorter period of time. And just keep measuring every five minutes with your instant read thermometer until you get it cooked 
perfectly. And remember to always allow for carryover cooking because it, it really can take your food from perfectly cooked to overcooked while it's sitting right on your cutting board. So we're shooting for 135, between 130, 135 for me to pull this out and then we'll let it sit and come up to 145. All right, it's been five minutes, so I'm gonna check a temperature. Now I know based on the internal temperature that it was when we started air frying, that I could really go the full 10 minutes before even checking. Cause so I think it's, I'm hoping it's gonna take about 15 minutes or so uh, to crisp that outer fat cap and get the internal temperature to the correct uh, point where we wanna pull it. But just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and just check it. And what I like to do when I'm taking an internal temperature is go back into the hole that I did before, okay? Because do you see there's some white stuff coming out? That's some of the juices kind of coagulating on the outside. So I like to go right back into the hole there and take a temperature. So now we are at about, now it depends. Let's go down just a little bit more and see. Okay, so see how it's getting higher? I know I am not quite in the center there. I want to find the lowest temperature. There we go. That's what I would anticipate. It's about 115, between 115 and 120. So that's one of the ways that you can um, kind of judge whether you're in the right part of the meat is move the thermometer up and down a little bit until you hit the coldest area. And then you're gonna know that you're in the right spot for the very center, because that's gonna be the coldest, and that's the target temperature that we're going for, that very center. We want it to be 135 before I pull it out of here. Somewhere between 130 and 135. All right, let's go ahead and give it another check here. It's looking beautiful, oh my gosh. That's why I love the Ninja Foodie, because you can pressure cook and then air crisp. It's just so amazing. So we're at 122. So that's good. I mean, that's really good, because I still want to go longer with that fat cap. So now I would cook anywhere from five to 10 more minutes, uh, and, and then I'll pull it out, okay? Because I want to pull it again be, uh, between 130 and 135. So I would say probably another five minutes or so, five to seven minutes, and it'll be ready to be pulled out. I've pulled it out, it's reading 131, 132. So now I'm just gonna let it sit with the thermometer in there until it reaches 145 and I will carve it up. Traditionally, we let steaks and chicken, breast and things like that rest about five to 10 minutes. But with larger roasts, we want to increase that time. So between 10 and 15 minutes is ideal. That allows all of the juices to redistribute into the meat fibers and just keeps that meat really, really juicy and moist. I also recommend leaving in the instant read thermometer if you're waiting like I am for it to come up to the proper temp. And that is because every time you pull it out, you're gonna have some juices leak out and you don't want that. So just leave it in. If it turns off, which mine does sometimes, we just kind of move it around and it'll turn back on. Another option is using a probe thermometer. And in fact, I've done this recipe in my Ninja Foodie Basics and Beyond course using the 701, the OL series, which has the probe. So we don't even worry about time there. We actually program the pressure cook temperature that we want it to be, and then the air fryer temperature that we want it to be. So that's really convenient. If you have the 701 model, you can absolutely do that. Set your pork loin temperature to 100 degrees Fahrenheit for a pressure cook, and then it'll shut off let it do the natural release, then move on to the air crisping and leave the probe right in because once we switch over to the air crisping function, it'll read that temperature and set that up to, you know, where you want it. If you want your rested pork, your serving temperature, your pork to be closer to 160, that is no problem. You know, you want to serve it the way you want to serve it. So then you would take your air crisping uh, temperature, internal temperature to 145 or 150, okay? All right, so now we play the waiting game, but it's all good. It's gonna be delicious and so, so worth it. All right, it's been about five minutes and it's up to 140, so I have no worries that it's gonna come up to 145 in the next five to 10 minutes. So now, what would happen though if you started to see this dropping, right? What if you hit the hottest point 
and it starts dropping to 139, 138 or something like that. It's cooling down and you never hit your target temperature. Well, you just pop it right back in for a few minutes. That's what you do. Okay. And cook it until the 145. And then I wouldn't worry too much about letting it rest again. Okay. Because it's not going to make that much of a difference in the outcome. But we do want to make sure that we have the internal temperature to a safe point for eating. Okay. For the pork, it's 145. Next time you read a recipe and you're getting a little bit irritated because the recipe creator says cook to an internal temperature of or adjust based on the size of your roast or bake it for, you know, 45 to 60 minutes and gives these ranges, try to understand that our job is to set you up for success not failure. And if we said cook your two and a half pound pork loin on pressure for 20 minutes with a full natural release and then air crisp for 15 minutes, and it's going to be perfect. And then you do that, but your pork loin was really cold out of the refrigerator or really warm because it had been sitting out for an hour, you're not going to have the same results that the recipe creator did. That's why we give you these guidelines and that's why we do the education so that you can make informed choices about how long and what temperature that you're going to cook your food at and definitely invest in a really good thermometer, okay? That is just key in the kitchen, especially when you're cooking meats and proteins. All right, there we are. We are at 145. Now I know that we are safe. I can remove the thermometer. Oh, it's crispy. Oh, it's cutting so beautifully. All right, so there's a thin slice. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. It looks juicy. Now I'm gonna do a thick slice for those of you that would wanna have a thick slice. And that's the one I'm gonna taste because that's the one that would be not so tender if we didn't cook it to the perfect internal temperature. Ooh, it's beautiful. It is glossy and shiny. That means it's really, really juicy. Oh my gosh. Wow. Now that is a piece of pork loin, my friends. Unbelievable. All right, let's see. Let's see how I'm going to take this little bit here with the crunchy rendered fat cap. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's good. Wow. Now, I think the rub could use a little sprucing up a little bit, but that's okay. It's just something I threw together real quick before the video. I think honestly, even though I put a half of a tablespoon of salt in the rub, I think it needs a little bit more salt there. It kind of gets lost. Um, I'm probably a little bit of brown sugar in that rub. Oh my gosh, that would have really been amazing. All right, here we go. Thick piece of pork, it cuts really nice. Oh my gosh. Does it cut with a fork? Mm-hmm. Not super easily, but it did cut with a fork. Oh my gosh. That is so, so good. Now there's just two of us here, right? So after Jeff and I get done having a pork loin dinner, maybe with some magic carrots or some really perfect mashed potatoes, yum, that sounds delicious. We like to thinly slice the rest of the pork up and make delicious Cuban crispy sandwich wraps. If you wanna see how I do that, you can watch that video right there.